interested in one way or the other. But even since then, uh, Hezbollah has maintained, I think, quite a tight control on the official Lebanese government position when it comes to the peace talks. So that uh, there has really been no productive thinking on the Lebanese side of what to do with the refugees. Even the issue last in August of giving jobs to the Palestinians was really the result not of a long thought out process but of you know, political expediency between different uh, political groups within Lebanon. So this is just to come back to my initial thesis. It's that today Lebanon really from the Palestinian perspective is I think more of an obstacle uh, to a solution when it comes to the Palestinian-Israeli negotiations. Uh, it's really more uh, employed by those who don't want to uh, see a solution or who on the contrary would like for reasons of their own to gain leverage in the talks to prevent any kind of a breakthrough between Palestinians and Israelis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Rory, listening to this and, 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 and being conscious of the huge obstacles that are in the way. What makes you so confident that this whole idea of economic development will actually make a difference? Well, I'm not confident that economic development per se will make a difference or bring about peace. My point was that in a post-conflict um, stage, when you have a Palestinian state, I think really the most significant bilateral relationship will probably be between Israeli technology and the resources of the GCC countries. And I think that's because a lot of the parties who I deal with and I'm in the Gulf very regularly at the highest level are telling me that if it wasn't for the obstacle of a Palestinian conflict that we can't find a settlement and, and pol politics at home don't allow us to ignore that but if it was not for that we could do great things. I mean a senior Qatari told me just the other week that if it was not um, for the failure to make progress on this issue and um, the Gulf and Israel could be a new economic superpower. Now my point is and if that happens, if the establishment mistake comes about, that is a real issue that people have to start dealing with. But the interesting thing, just building on what Michael said, is that for many, many years in the Western world, the Gulf states were criticized for not using some of their energy um, resources to deal with the Palestinian refugee issue. I would say it's so significant these days is the opportunities offered by Israel's technological development that it would be a small price to pay now if the Gulf states thought that this in itself would solve the conflict and that they would invest 10 billion, 15 billion. Because 10 or 15 billion in dealing with the roots of, of the refugee issue from an economics perspective is probably less than 2% of Gulf annual cash surpluses at the moment. So from being a politically, you could argue, a politically convenient issue for not dealing with the conflict, I think a lot of the emerging wealthy nations in the Gulf are wishing that this conflict would go away now so they can get on with business. And that's just one perspective, and there are many critiques of that, but I think that's something worth thinking about now. Ghanem Abrahim, uh, coming uh, economic superpower, uh, the, the future Palestinian state? Um, the region? Potentially, but um, very improbable, I'm afraid. Um, I think there are a lot of countries in the region, uh, talking about the regional context, who would be very uncomfortable with a strong Palestinian state. Um, it has been in the interest of other countries in the region to ensure that the conflict goes on and on and on and on. And I'm afraid they will still put obstacles for the, for the development and the creation of a very strong Palestinian state. I think things are very slowly changing due to outside pressure. But, uh, but it will be a very long time before this happens. There are two phenomena that we've seen developing in the region, particularly related indirectly to the Palestinians here. One was uh, uh, Michael very indirectly touched on, de-Christianization of the region. And, and part of this is the settlement of the refugees in Lebanon um, through the, uh, by being absorbed somehow or another, some way or another. And the other one is, 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 is um, um, sorry, uh, is what, um, what the Spanish Prime Minister, former Spanish Prime Minister, I should say, Jose Maria Aznar said yesterday, that Israel is not a Middle Eastern country, but is a Western country in the Middle East. Now, this is the first step towards delegitimizing de Israel. And I think both those phenomena need to be looked at in, 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 in the context of how we want the Palestinian state to be part of this region. Because Palestine can only be defined by Israel, and Israel can only be de defined by Palestine. Um, and, 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 and I'm not saying that in a, in a competing manner, but I think they need to collaborate on their future development. Abraham, uh, uh, do, do, do uh, people in the Gulf realistically believe that, that, that the money that they are putting in will lead to, to a viable economic uh, entity, a successful entity? 
I think I think it does um, at least to support not m causing more problems in, 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 in among the Palestinian leadership and the, the different movements and the Palestinians. And uh, I I agree with uh, Professor Rory for for the, the being optimistic and uh, 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 and looking to the future, the post. Uh, 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 the, the Palestinian state, independent state, looking not only uh, into the, the Israeli technology, high technology, and the Gulf uh, uh, resources. Just look at one simple thing. Look at the uh, strategic location of Jerusalem. If we look at, look at it from one perspective, which is the, the, the tourism industry, look at it from not only uh, Muslims who, who are going to visit the holy places, uh, uh, Jews all over the world, Muslims all over the world, uh, Christians all over the world. And, and what is the, the, uh, uh, the, the development in the area, the investment in, in, in this perspective, the value chain uh, uh, of, the, of the tourism industry is, is, is massive. If you look at, for example, Saudi Arabia during, during the period of Hajj and Umrah, and, and, and they, they, uh, uh, they have uh, four or five million in, in a very short time uh, uh, during the pilgrimage. And, and there is still pilgrimage coming from Jordan, uh, through Jordan, from Europe, from America, uh, uh, through Israel as well. And, and I think there is a great development uh, future for it. Uh, Hassan, uh, uh, from, your, from your experience in the region, we've heard tourism, we've heard high technology. Do you think there are other industries that may be worth developing and that could be important for the economic viability of the future Palestinian state? Thank you. Well, let me just uh, say something. I mean, the functional liberal approach, of course, it is interesting, but since 90s up until now, I would say that sort of functional liberal approach did not approach or fail to bring peace and solve the issue such a comprehensive uh, peace. So it's not an issue of economic cooperation, economic development that would bring the peace in this respect. There are other issues, I mean, high politics issues which need to be tackled in this respect. I mean, when we speak of economic cooperation, we speak of tourism and uh, that sort of thing. Recently, I have just finished a study or a research paper evaluating peace agreement between Jordan and Israel after 16 years, right? I mean, probably till mid-90s, people had hopes that economic dividends of the peace, there would be sort of economic cooperation between Israel and so on and so forth. But since 1960, 1996, up until now, economic cooperation between Jordan and Israel has been declining in this respect because of the high politics issue. And I came to a conclusion that, you know, the regional contest, particularly the Palestinian-Israeli peace, the lack of peace and that, is, is playing a detrimental role in shaping the nature and the path of the Jordan-Israeli uh, peace in this respect. So we, we could have tourism, of course. We could have, I mean, over water issue. I mean, uh, th this is an area where we could cooperate in this respect. You know, in the 90s, a project was proposed uh, to connect the Dead Sea with the Red Sea in a water conveyor. <coughs> I mean, 